So welcome to worship here at First Baptist. I uh, got back from vacation and heard about uh, the various bags that had gotten taken around with the cookies and everything. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope more importantly, you were able to use the extra bags to reach somebody. Uh, somebody that maybe was feeling isolated or doesn't, hopefully even somebody doesn't know the Lord or whose own church hadn't been reaching out to them. Uh, you know, one of the thoughts on that was out of, out of uh, Philippians, Paul talks to Timothy and to the church of Philippi, and he, and he says, you know, the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace will be with you. So those of you who've been blessed with the various things people have been bringing to you, let those things be an example of how you can be a blessing to somebody else. And so those bags were an opportunity for you to do that, but you certainly don't have to wait for something like that to, to find ways to bless others in the name of Christ. I hope you were able to do that. I hope it was a good experience for you. We've had several people asking when we're gonna get back together. And the answer is soon. Uh, we, uh, we will be sending a letter out probably this week that will give you details as to, as to the plans. We, I've had several people ask and we've been kind of looking. Matter of fact, some of you may have filled out the survey we sent. Um, and we're, we're just kind of trying to be careful, make sure we're safe with folks and, and yet not, not be hesit overly hesitant either. Uh, so watch for that letter in the mail. That will have the, the dates and the plan and also the various instructions as to how things are going to be because even if we get back together, there's going to be some adjustments temporarily because we just don't want to set up an unnecessary funeral. Amen? Okay, so with that, uh, I'd like to share uh, some things this week that uh, relate to, to stuff that occurred to me primarily during our prayer time, uh, during our prayer vigil. But I should begin by saying happy birthday. You know why it's happy birthday? Because this is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church. And you know, at Christmas time, we always read the birthday story about Jesus. So let's read the birthday story of the church as we begin from Acts chapter two. It goes like this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and astonished saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then I want to skip on down a little further down to verse 39. For the promise is for you and for your children, for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized and there added that day about 3,000 souls. Did you hear that? There were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship 
and the breaking of bread and prayer and all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. That's the birth of the church. It's an amazing story, a powerful story when the, when the spirit of God rushed in on that place. You know, I know, a lot of you maybe maybe picked up where it talked about that they gathered at the temple every day or that even when the mighty spirit came that they were gathered together in that upper room. And I, I want to suggest to you to be praying because we're going to gather together again before too long. And I, I want you to be praying that when we gather together, we can experience that spirit of God afresh poured out upon us. That's what the prayer vigil raised, right? That was one of the requests we had. A prayer vigil, we prayed for God to pour out a spirit on our church in a way that none of us have ever seen before. What would that look like? Or as I shared with a friend in a text the other day, what will that look like? Or we also had as part of the prayer request to pray for God to pour out a revival upon our country greater than we've ever seen before. Like in that song that was played at the beginning about God reviving us, right? This is a prayer. This isn't anything new. This is something that the generation of churches have looked to God before, seeking him to do, seeking his power, seeking his move. A new great awakening. You know, now God has to do it, but he does it when we are obedient when we seek him, when we serve him. You know, the, uh, the other songs we had there talked about how we let God work in our lives. You know, how our obedience relates to God doing things. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I did while I was away was I, I read, uh, and so I, I picked up a book to read. Uh, one of my, uh, my theology professor used to talk about books that he called RBDs meant read before you die. And he, he, uh, he did a lot of literature books that were classic because he was a literature, literature major as well. But he also did a lot of Christian classics. And one of the ones I happened to pick up was called In His Steps by Charles Sheldon, which I had in my file and I pulled out and decided I'd use vacation time to read it. And I don't know if you've read it or not, but if you haven't, you should. Uh, it really is a, a great classic. It was written in 1896. And uh, Sheldon made some very interesting statements in here and that, that surprised me. How many of you remember hearing in recent years the little saying, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Do any of you realize that it came from this book from a hundred years ago, 130 years ago? I, had, I didn't know that. I learned that in there. But in the book, he, he, he talks about some churches and a pastor and tells some stories of, of what happens when churches, when God's people get hold of those things. Matter of fact, there's a little bit in here I thought maybe I would even read to you um, because he, he talked about how people get involved and what God does. And one of the places he talks a little bit about when we give to God, if we're just giving money or if we're giving of ourselves, here's how he says it. Men would give money who would not think of giving themselves. And the money they gave did not represent any real sacrifice because they did not miss it. They gave what was the easiest to give, what hurt them the least. Where did the sacrifice come in? Was this following Jesus? Was this going with him all the way? I want us to be thinking about some of that as we think about today's passages and today's scripture and today's challenge. You know, what does it mean to follow Christ in the way, in the words of those songs we saw at the very beginning? If you were to really do those things, what would that mean in your life? What does it mean in mine? You know, when I was, was looking at some of this and, and thinking about, about the scripture that we are having today, the Pentecost the scripture, it makes me think of several things. One of them was, first of all, the challenge of these book, of this book. 
and whether we are satisfied with our relationship with God and, and whether we're satisfied or whether we settled, you know, it, have we really pursued the mighty spirit of God pouring in us? Have we really been open to God pouring out all that we could possibly receive or have we just settled for a little bit of God, a little bit of time, a, a, a Sunday morning worship, something on the side, rather than a dynamic, living, vital, personal relationship that empowers and invigorates us day by day as, as we see God change us and move through us to change other people. Is that, is that your experience? Is that mine? The other thing I thought of as I listened to that scripture was the other times that God's spirit moved in powerful ways. For instance, in 1 Kings chapter 8, there's the story of, of the, when Solomon is dedicating the temple and they bring the Ark of the Covenant in. And as they bring it in, this is what it says in 1 Kings 8. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. What if when we gather back here, finally after these weeks away, what if, what if we had all prayed and, and as we gather together, God's spirit is so strong in our presence that we can't even open our mouths to sing a song. We can't even stand up out of our pew because God's glory is pouring out upon us. Wouldn't that be something to see? Pray for it. Pray for it. Or there's another story in Numbers chapter 11 when Moses is getting the, the, the 70 men that are going to help him take care of the judging of the people of Israel and the administrative work. It goes like this. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and put them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. You know, in Moses' day, the Spirit of God was not upon all the people. That began at Pentecost, this Sunday, the birth of the church, when God's Spirit came and came down as Joel had prophesied upon all people who knew the Lord and filled our hearts and took up residence with our hearts as the temple of God. I also thought of Micah, where it says this, It shall come to pass in the latter days, well, now, Joel said it was going to happen in the latter days, and Micah says the latter days, and if when the disciples had this experience, it was the latter days, how much more is it the latter days now? So it's talking about us, folks. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and it shall be lifted up above the hills, and people shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Could you imagine if we opened on, Sunday, on that Sunday morning when we first start services again, and the church would be so lifted up in the eyes of the people because of God's glory, that people from all around would stream to come. We have to turn them away right now because we're limited to how many could be. We'd have to go outside and preach like Peter did. And we could probably do that, don't you think? I also like this verse out of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant 
that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people and no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. That's Pentecost. God speaks to each one of us. The scripture is used by God to talk to each one of us. We each can know God and know his will for our lives. And, and that's part of what Sheldon talks about in his book. Making it a habit. Making it the core of your life. To know what God wants. Well... The songs we began with are some songs many of you know from back when that talk about following Jesus and commitment and God pouring out the Spirit. But as we were doing the prayer vigil, and during my time, I was really struck by a, by a current song, more current song, that uh, addresses that same issue. And some of you will know it, some of you won't. The name of the song is Build Your Kingdom Here. It's by Wren Collective, is their name. They're from Bangor, Ireland. It's kind of a folk music, Irish folk music style. And, and it's, it's, it's a very profound message that's in their song and uh, I, I want to share around the words of that song thinking in the context of Pentecost and I encourage you to, to, to look up the song on YouTube spend some time with it or, or, or download it buy it or, or you know buy a CD if you're like me get, get something but, but some way to make this song a part of your prayer life and that's what I want to do I want to take the words of that song and look at it as a prayer for our church because that's what God led me to do while we were having our prayer vigil. So follow this with me. And some of the words you may have already seen on Facebook because we had them there as well. The song begins this way. Come set your rule and reign. You know, that begins with, with the Lord's Prayer, right? You know, uh, may your will be done on earth as in heaven. We often look around us and say, and, and how things are troubled and say, God, you need to do something. And we ask, well, when is God going to restore? When, when is he going to bring his rule and reign and make things happen? Well, the next part of the song, the next few words are interesting in that context because it says, in our hearts again. You see, often we're looking in the wrong place. It's not that he needs to rule out there first. It's that he needs to rule in here first. This is where it begins. Increase in us, we pray, the song says. In us not out there, not somebody else, not in this building, in us, inside you, inside me. Increase, God, your spirit and your work inside us. Unveil why we're made, the song says. Do you know why you're made? Do you know God's purpose in your life? Or more importantly, are you fulfilling, are you doing God's purpose in your life? Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. How's your hope? Especially in these dark times. You, would you describe the hope of your heart, the hope of your life, as a spark or a blaze? A blaze is a mighty fire. What's your faith hope like? Like wildfire in our very souls, says the song. You know, wildfire is spread uncontrollably. Is that, is that the hope of your heart? Is that the way the faith is in your heart? Does it spread, burn out of control? Because God is so strong in your life and in your way and in your mind and in your heart and in your devotion that it just overflows. Holy Spirit, it says, come, invade us now. Invade us. Invasion isn't it? come rest upon us. It's invade, come take over. Come, come overwhelm us like a mighty wind, right? In Pentecost, right? Think, think about what we've seen in recent years, like that, that tsunami in Southeast Asia where the waves just poured in and they were unstoppable. Or like a hurricane that comes and overwhelms the shoreline. Is that the experience you have of the Holy Spirit in your life? Come invade us, God. It says, Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. Not a building. Us. You. Me. We are his church. And we need your power, it says, in us. Ephesians says, God's power within us can do far more than we can ask or think or imagine. How's God's power in your life? 
Do you live a life on the power of God or do you live a life powerless, struggling against everything that comes along? I want to follow on in the psalm. This is, this is such a great prayer. We seek your kingdom first. Really? Do we? Do you? Do I? How do you seek his kingdom first? Is that a true statement? It goes on. We hunger and we thirst. Are those the words that would describe your passion for God? Or is it just, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, I'll go to church today. Yeah, I'll open my Bible today. Or do you hunger and thirst? You know, when I get up in the morning, my, my stomach is ready for breakfast, and I feel it. And, and it just gnaws at me until I finally eat something. I don't know if you're like that in the morning or not, but I am. What if you let the Spirit of God gnaw in your heart for you the Word of God? Do you get up in the morning hungry for God's Word? Thirsting for time with Jesus? Longing to hear more than anything else His voice for you for the day? The next line is pretty powerful. Refuse to waste our lives. In the scope of eternity, have you been wasting your life with earthly goals, with worldly things? Has your time and your energy, your resources been devoted to the things that God desires? That's part of what this guy talks about in this book. It's probably in the church library. You can borrow my copy, but I encourage you to read it. But that's part of what he talks about, how we get sidetracked. And, and, and instead of, of, of using our lives in ways that, that further the kingdom, we get caught up in all these other things and we fritter away all the opportunities God provides for us. The next line in the song says, for you're our joy and prize. Is he? Is God your joy? Is he your prize? Or is there something else that you prize more? And listen to the next line. To see the captive hearts released. Is that a hunger for you? Do you care about people who don't know the Lord? Maybe somebody living right next door. Maybe somebody attending another church even. You know, I heard a speaker recently from another church tradition who thought it was odd when she heard people talk about individuals having a personal relationship with Jesus. And she was saying, it's as if God doesn't have anything else to do but listen to you. And she's never grasped that Jesus does really want to listen to you and for you to listen to him and to be your savior and your best friend and somebody that you know personally. Each and every day you have interactions don't assume that just because somebody goes to church, even to our church, that they know Jesus personally. Going to church and knowing the Lord for yourself are not the same thing. That lady, with her all her background in church, had never come to understand that God wants a personal relationship with her and with you. It goes on. The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. You know, in this time, there's a lot of folks hurting. They've lost loved ones. Many are in sickness as the disease spreads. Many people are facing poverty. That's their hurting. They've lost their jobs. How are you laying down your life to make a difference in heaven's name for those people now? How am I doing that? We are your church, it says. We are the church, his church, for him to use. And then it says, and we pray, revive this earth. You know, if we aren't seeking God's move on the earth and in our lives, who will? It's up to us, folks. We are the church. Build your kingdom here, it says. Well, where's here? Well, we're the church, not the building, so here, build your kingdom here, is wherever you are, wherever I am, wherever the people who make up the church of God are, even during a time of social distancing or stay-at-home orders. God can build his church there, right there in your living room, right there in your kitchen, right there in your heart, in my heart. Listen to this next verse, next phrase out of the song. Let the darkness fear. 
Hmm. Does the darkness of Satan fear the way God dwells in you? Or does darkness scoff and shrug its shoulders, knowing you're no threat to, to Satan's hold on the lives of people around you? Doesn't worry about it. Or does it does darkness fear? Hmm. You know, if God's hand is on you in a mighty way, Satan trembles. Show your mighty hand, the song says. Have you ever seen God's hand move in a mighty way? In a way that's just unimaginably big? Just changes things. The 3,000 people in one day, the, the people walking and leaping and praising God because God healed somebody, the people drawn and coming all through the mountain of the Lord to hear the word of God, the things that this scripture talks about. The song goes on. Heal our streets and land. Do you want our country to be better than it is? I do, don't you? Well, listen to what the next line says. Set your church on fire. You know, the answer of healing our streets and land isn't in Washington, D.C. And it's not at the CDC and it's not in the U.N. It's not, it's not even in, down in Lincoln. It's, it's in your church. Set your church on fire. Work in our hearts, set our hearts on fire. That's what will bring healing to our land, to our streets. Win this nation back. Now, whether or not this nation ever was fully on touch with God or not, we know that we clearly are off track now as a nation, don't we? In, in so many different ways. Do you believe God could win this nation back? Do you pray for that? Are you willing to let God use you to do that? Did it ever occur to you that that may be how he does? One of you listening today may be the agent that God uses to win this whole nation back. Far beyond all that we ask and think, right? Are you open to that? God, I'll follow you wherever you lead me. Use me however you want. Fill me with your spirit. Accomplish the things that I can't imagine. I love this next line out of the song. Change the atmosphere. Oh my goodness, don't we need that today? The atmosphere around us so needs changing. Wouldn't you say that? You know, and, you know instead of what we see, people nitpicking and belly aching and lawsuits and racism, people being offended all the time at everybody's word and always having to apologize and on and on and on. Wouldn't it be something if instead of that kind of an atmosphere, there was an atmosphere of love for one another? and an atmosphere of forgiveness, and an atmosphere of working for common good, and an atmosphere of working together, an atmosphere filled with the Spirit of God. Not just out there, but beginning, as we said, in our hearts of our church members, in our hearts, in your heart, in mine, and in the life of our church, in the life of our city, and our state, our country, and our world beyond. Build your kingdom here, we pray. Here. Is that your prayer? I want to go on to the next verse of the song. Unleash your kingdom's power. Do you want that? Do you want God just to let loose with his power in our church, in our nation, and show people who he is? Do you want him to do it in you, changing your life? Or through you to change the lives of others? or through other people around you as, as they work in their own unique way and their own gifts, which may be different than yours. The song goes on, reaching the near and far. The near, the people next door to you, across the street, or on the other side of town, on the other side of the globe, those are the far. Is that the burden and desire of your heart today, that those people would be reached for Jesus? Does it even occur to you? Do you let God use you? Do you say, God, give me that opportunity. God, let me be the agent you use to bring somebody to you today, tomorrow, every day. The next line is something we often forget. It says, no force of hell can stop. You realize that? Evil can't win. God is greater. Good always conquers evil. Love always conquers hate. We don't always see it here, 
but it does. God is greater than any evil that we are seeing in this world. Never forget that. God has never lost control. And then the song says, your beauty changing hearts. It's the inside that needs renewal first of ourselves and of those around us. Changing hearts again. And then a very troubling line. They sing, you made us for so much more than this. Is that your life? That's the challenge of this book, that he made us for something more than what we're doing. Have you settled? Is your relationship with God all it really could be? All you always imagined? Is your relationship with God, if they were to write it would, it, would it be like the book of Acts in chapter two, where God just moved in mighty ways? Or is it, yeah, I go to church, and yeah, I read a devotional. What kind of fire is there in your relationship with God? The next verse says, awake the kingdom seed in us. You know, we talk a lot about seeds here in the church. The seed is there. The seed can grow God's seed. We've talked so many times about our job is to plant seeds. And if we plant enough seeds, we'll see the harvest that God brings about. And I believe that. And I want to remind you of how Jesus talked about that in chapter four of Mark. He said this, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the air. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. We don't know how God does all the things he does. But we know if we plant seeds, he'll use them. Jesus goes on to say, and he, and he said, with what can we pair the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? is a, like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so the birds of the air can nest in its shade. You know, if we plant even the smallest seed, God can do mighty things that others can come and be part of and see. And I think we've seen some of those things in our church. I think we've had some very blessed times, but I think what we've seen is nothing compared to what good God could do if we unite before his throne and really seek it and ask for it. The scripture goes on, the song goes on, fill us with the strength and love of Christ. Fill us, not just a little bit, fill us overflowing with God's strength, with his, with his love, you know? Like, like in Psalm, my cup overflows. Let that happen, right? And then it says, oh, and we are the hope on earth. That's us, folks. We are God's agents. We are God's strategy. It's us that he wants to use. We are the bastions of hope as Christians in a hopeless and fearful world. We're it. We are the hope on earth. The question is, how well are we being that hope? How well are we letting God's spirit have free reign in our lives to move through us and to prompt us to share faith and to bring people? I wanna read the words to the chorus one more time. This is a great prayer, folks. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here. Here, we pray. We're going to close today by, by sharing that song with you, playing it for you. I hope you enjoy it. But I want you to pray it. I want you to let it be the prayer of, and, and, and start imagining what it will be like when God starts answering those prayers in ways we can't even imagine. I wanna say thank you again to those of you that have been donating and sending your money, whether it's via PayPal or the mail or whatever. The ongoing support means a lot and it makes a difference. But I also want to ask for your prayer support. I wanna ask you to join us in this prayer. Some of you already did either the prayer vigil or with the Facebook message or whatever, but pick it up again. Don't, set, don't let us settle for something less. Let's pursue the power of God's move, his spirit in our lives and then also in and through our church. 
I want to pray as we close, and then I'll, then we'll share that song with you. Would you bow with me? Almighty God, I don't know what you might do in this age, but I know that this age needs you. And God, I know that as a church, sometimes we look at the things we do and we feel like it's not very much or we feel like maybe we can't do very much or sometimes we think something was wonderful and yet nobody really had a change of life because of it. It was just an exciting thing. God, what we need is not programs and plans and all that. What we need is your spirit in our nation and in our church and in our hearts, moving us fresh, empowering us, giving us the burden to care about the things that you care about, giving us the courage to speak the word that you tell us to speak, giving us the, the, the boldness to seize each opportunity that you give us to bring glory to you. Lord, may we be people that are clearly the light of the world and the hope of God on earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks. Have a good week. Listen to the song. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls holy spirit come invade us now we are your church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for you're our joy and prize, to see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our church we pray revive this earth build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on
darkness clear Show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land Set your church